what is good, Drake Egg? We're coming at you. Squirrel season is ticking down. I mean, like, we got just a few days left. So today what we're going to do, we're going to try to kill a few more squirrels right here before the season runs out. Then after that, we're actually going to give a little farm update. Because, you know, I took a year of ag. I'm a farmer. But I've actually got two really cool updates for the farm. So just uh, hang in there. But first, we're going to try to kill some squirrels. Now, first off, let me tell you what we're going to be using. We can just pick a 22. We can just pick a 12 gauge. Go blast one out of the sky. No problem. But we want to give it a little bit of a challenge. And so, we're going to be using a 410. If you don't know, shotguns are sized in gauges. That meaning that the higher the number, the smaller the bore size. That's why a 12 gauge is like this big. A 20 gauge is like that big, and a 410, which I think would be called a 41, is about, well, this big. I don't know if y'all take offense to that. I'm kind of pointing a gun at it. Chill, comment below. Are y'all offended by this? But needless to say, this is the smallest shotgun they make, as far as I know. But here is the bullets we're going to be shooting. This gun is rated for 3-inch shells. A lot of 410s only shoot 2.5-inch shells. This, since this one is capable of holding 3-inch shells, that's exactly what we're going to use. Because keep in mind, even though it's only a half-inch, that's a lot more pellets that you can potentially hit a squirrel with. Now, a fun story with this gun, a lot of y'all probably have the same gun. This is actually a Rossi single barrel. A lot of 410s are single shot. I'd say most of them are single shot. But you just click this lever right here, it breaks down, you put one in it, pull it back, cock your hammer, boom, then it should sling out the shell once you're done. With my Rossi kit, it came with a 12 gauge shotgun, but I actually bought this barrel separately. And it looks really weird. I don't know if you can tell that, but because of the bore diameter and the chamber. I'm not sure if it's going to give me aiming problems because I definitely can't look down the barrel. But we are going to test shoot it first and uh, at least try to hit a piece of cardboard. Oh, this is going to be kind of crazy. I've not shot a 410 in a long time. And the last time, I missed a squirrel six times. Y'all true great gangsters will remember that. It was about two or three years ago. Still, never killed a squirrel with it. I went hunting for like three days. But like I was saying, the little cardboard box right there, that should help us see what our pattern is for this shotgun. Yeah guys, here we go. We're just gonna load up this single shot. In goes a three inch shell. It is loaded. I'm gonna aim for the center of it. Shouldn't kick much and shouldn't be that loud, but then again, it's still a gun. Still in the this. Oh, that's not good. Oh my gosh, you're kidding me. That ain't good at all. Okay. We uh, got a problem. Oh, snap. What was that? Um, so it uh, turns out that uh, the barrel this thing came with is actually not meant for the receiver at all. I don't know if y'all can see it, but the firing pin's actually hitting up here in that silver ring. And, uh, well, that's that's not the primer. So we actually did absolutely nothing. Long story short, this ain't gonna work. Dang. What a tragedy. Um, give me about three minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And we have a different 410. This one got a little bit of a stainless action going on. Some of y'all actually may have one of these too. Go ahead and tell me in the comments. This one is an H&R. Yeah, that's about all I know about it. Oh, a Deluxe Topper Model 98. It's also a 410 fitted for three inch shells. This one has a fixed choke in it at full. So honestly, it should be kind of a sniper. We got a box over there. The same box we was about to shoot in a minute. Let's just uh, blast it and see if it dies. Go check it out. I'll be honest, guys. I think we killed it. I hope we did. If we didn't, we're in trouble. Now, there's probably not many of y'all out there asking why don't people use these more often, but for the three of you that are, it's because they're just overall not as good at killing. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, within the shell itself, there's not much room for powder. This other reason, there's also not much room for pellets. And so with me standing pretty close with this choke being as tight as a 410 can get, this is still our pattern. The kill was on right here, that's still not a ton of pellets. I mean, we wasn't standing very far. And even besides those pellets, there's not even many pellets in the box at all. So if that answers your question, if we shot a 12 gauge, this right here would be absolutely peppered and probably all of the rest of the box would also be peppered. As well as part of this would probably be knocked out. But like that, 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 those are actually from like a sniper. I was shooting last week, but uh, yeah, as for that, it doesn't have a ton of pellets, but if you're decently good at aiming, should be able to hit you should be able to kill whatever you want to with this but with a 410 there's a lot of positives one the gun's light two the ammo's light three it doesn't really kick it's not loud it's kind of cheap i guess it's perfect for a small person like a kid and for shooters that may be afraid of a recoil of a 12 gauge which 12 gauges they do kick a lot until you get used to them but before we get out there and we go kill a little squirrel i'm gonna tell you about a big sale on kennelgrade1.com and these deals are big right here right now i'm gonna tell you the big gun case normally 
only $39.99. We've dropped it down for you guys, $24.99. So this is almost half off. A couple other big things that are on sale. You got the green gunsling, normally $20. I'm giving it to you for $7.99. Same with the small gun case, normally $15. We're giving it to you for $8. And then these right here, you can get a pair of them, which is two for $11.99. So basically six bucks a piece. Also, the KG binoculars are 25% off and the binocular holders are also on a pretty big discount as well. And don't forget about the KG pocket knives. We have Midnight, which is a black knife, and Snow White, which is a white knife. Those are actually up on the site, but then again, they may actually be sold out. If you want any of this stuff, you might want to grab it pretty soon while these prices are like super low. KennelGrade1.com slash shop or first link in the description. It's also been proven by Ohio State University. I've done told y'all this before, but if you buy merch, you're like 60% less likely to get the coronavirus. And I mean, oh snap, scary. Ooh. <coughs> Better get it now. Get a great one to come set shopping for something. But anyways, we got the head cam. Let's go snipe a squirrel with the shotgun. Also, whenever I first started hunting, I wasn't allowed to uh, put a shell in my gun until I saw a squirrel because my mom was afraid I was going to trip over a stick and shoot myself. So we're going to do that just because we're going back to old times. Got him that time. We've got one shell left, so we gotta make it count. Can't miss this time. I think he's down though, he ain't going nowhere. So basically the whole hunt so far, I've seen a lot of squirrels, squirrels that I probably could have killed with 12 gauge down in the back of my head. I knew I was shooting a 410 and it's really the most powerful thing. It doesn't have great range. So I really held back from a lot of shots. Even that one right there with the 12 gauge, I would have killed it the first shot, but then I ended up maybe hitting him once maybe a pellet maybe no pellets i'm not sure then he crawled on up a tree and i took another shot another thing you gotta keep in mind when you're using a 410 you could you could see the squirrel but if you shoot and say there's like a stick like this one just a little bit of that one that could knock down two or three pellets and after a pellet from a 410 hits a stick like that it's basically not gonna have any power so you do gotta watch out for like brush and sticks and leaves even in the way because it doesn't take much to knock off a 410 shot but that is the good thing about using a shotgun because you have multiple projectiles he's done he ain't moving should have had a pretty good shot on him with the 410 so i basically sniped him i'm gonna come right here and Lean no 410 up on a tree while I go get the squirrel. And here he is. Dead in the hammer. The 410 definitely did not have any problem killing him. I mean, I had a little bit of a problem killing him the first shot, but you know what? If you can get a good shot on a squirrel, it doesn't really matter what you're shooting. You can definitely kill him. So a few tips for using a 410. Be patient. Try to get as close as possible. And be sure to hold right on the squirrel, if not the squirrel's head. If you can hit a few pellets in the head, he ain't going nowhere. That's even what I was doing with this guy. I mean, for the head, but honestly, it looks like I hit him everywhere. My plan's actually to skin up that squirrel. I'm not going to eat it today, but but I am going to eat it later. I have an idea of what I'm going to do with the squirrel. So right now we're going to head on back to the house. We're a little bit of ways away. Skin up this squirrel. Then we're going to check in with the farm. I got an update for the chickens and the goats. Both of them. Pretty cool, I think. And now it is time to skin up the squirrel. We're going to take his full body, except for his head and skin, of course. The tool of choice, of course, you already know. It's the KG Pocket Knife Single Blade. This in here is a pink tigress. These have been sold out for a long time. But actually, on the website, there should be some black and white tigress. Like I was telling you about earlier, there's a possibility they're still in stock. But then again, I'm not that sure. Now, as much as I'd love to just go ahead and film me skinning up this squirrel so y'all could see the process. I'm actually not going to do that because YouTube doesn't like this and uh, this is YouTube's platform so I'm just going to respect that. So if you want to know how to skin a squirrel, uh, this probably ain't a good video for you but I'll catch you in about three more seconds. Didn't even take three seconds. Can you believe that? Anyways, there's the KG Pocket Knife. There's the completely skinned squirrel. Just in case you didn't believe me. I would give you an update on the pool pond but I mean it's just a bunch of minnows in a green pool pond. There's nothing really new about them. They're not growing any mainly because they're minners and they don't really ever grow much. But here is the chicken update. You may remember my chicken lot not being this big, but as you can tell, I've actually expanded it. It used to go from uh, that corner 
like a straight line right over there to that post. Well, before I even started YouTube, so probably four or five, maybe six years ago, I had my first chickens, and they were at a chicken coop over there, like way over there. And then I actually ended up selling all my chickens for like a year or two. And then I actually got more chickens whenever I got this building right here. And so then they had this lot right here. Well, my old chicken coop was just literally just sitting down there growing up in weeds, and I was thinking, there's some good materials in there. I mean, yeah, some of the actual chicken wire is already rusted and some of the wood's already rusted. But like the wire like this, the two by four wire, that stuff's hard to destroy, guys. It was still down there, basically pristine condition. Bent a little bit, but still in good condition. So basically me and Adam went down there, we scrapped up everything we could get and we got enough fence. Just from looting the old chicken coop, we got enough to expand all of this. And that's, a, that's almost double of what they used to have. And if y'all know anything about chickens, well, that's a good thing, because look at them. They're having so much fun. They're scraping new dirt every single day. Of course, best case scenario, I let them like open, run, or whatever, where they can run anywhere they want. But here, that's just not practical. There's literally predators everywhere. And plus, if I can keep them in a cage about like this, we should be good anyway. They should have plenty of food right here. Throw them out some corn, throw them out some seeds. That is the chicken update. Now let's go up to the goat update, which is possibly even better. Now, I actually don't remember if I showed you the updated fence, so I'm gonna go ahead and just show you in here instead of just cutting right up there i've expanded it all the way out there and it wraps all the way around and then i'll hike up this mountain hey don't you and it actually comes way over there and i've even pushed it out more so they've got so much more room as well now it's great that these goats have more room but i'm gonna be honest they've not even put a dent in the vegetation that was here in their old lot but the reason it was because in the last video where i was actually upgrading the fence nobody watched it it was one about catfishing but i said we was actually thinking about getting a new animal and then by the end of the video we figured out that they already gave away the animal so we can't have it Sweet. so for now it's just these two and they're just chilling but chilling indeed me and my uncle noticed tater her bag is starting to this is kind of just conspiracy. Get out of the way, Chip! Get out of the way! Okay. Now, right now, this is just conspiracies. But if you look under Tater, down her at her bag where her udders are, it's starting to get bigger. Can y'all see that? It is, especially when she turns around. Well, she just stepped on her briar. But it's starting to get bigger and like, I don't know, filling up with milk, we're hoping. Now what's gonna happen, she is supposed to be pregnant, so she's supposed to be having kids. But now that we're seeing that her bag's actually getting bigger, possibly filling up with milk, that's a really good sign that it's, we're getting closer to that time. Another thing I noticed with Tater is that she's really just been laying around cause she's, I don't know, I thought she's just being lazy. But now that I think about it, I'm gonna look it up on my phone right now. Also on the back, I don't know if y'all know this, we have KG Grey Grippers. They're like kind of pop sockets, but they're better cause they're Grey Grippers, you know what I mean? But I'm actually gonna get on Google right now and look up when goats are about to have kids do they start getting lazy because she just lays around when goats get pregnant do they get lazy oh <gasps> signs your goat is getting close to kidding i'm gonna wash this and i'll get right back with y'all i think she's getting closer though because she her bag is filling up and she is getting lazier <laughs> trying to communicate. I don't think they understand. I was saying I ate a cheeseburger for lunch and the tater tots are pretty good too. Y'all pick up what I'm putting down? Nope, okay, cool. <laughs> oh yeah, she she liked it. She said, cool, me too. I don't know what she's talking about though. She didn't have a, did you have a hamburger? I don't know what she thinks she is. She thinks she's some Rocky Mountain billy goat. I don't know what she thinks she's doing standing up on them logs. You ain't from the Rocky Mountains, get down. You ain't from the Rocky Mountains. Here, eat this. There you go. Eat that, eat that uh, poison ivy, girl. Eat the poison ivy. Chip, eat this. Oh my gosh, why are you in such a rush? Where are you going? Stop running away from me. Eat my grass, eat my grass. Anyways, guys, I don't really have anything else to tell you but just here and stare at my goats. I don't know if y'all want to do that. If you do, you'll watch a goat video. But now the squirrel season's basically over. If you want to reminisce, go relive some moments. Here's some of our best squirrel hunting videos of the year. And if you want to watch my very favorite squirrel hunting video, you can check it out right here. 